All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, real quick, we'll be going over the metallic shaders in Fusion or how to make a metallic shader in Fusion. Uh, so go ahead and open up DaVinci Resolve. Uh, this, again, public beta 17, uh, DaVinci Resolve 17. This is version 8, I believe. Um, quite a bit more stable uh, than obviously the previous versions. Now, real quick, while this is loading, um, let me go over uh, the Blender real quick. If you are familiar with Blender, you know that metallic shaders are actually pretty basic, very simple. Um, pretty much you just pipe in all your uh, maps. Um, I'm using this Metal 023. This is from the uh, website CC Zero Textures. Um, awesome website, commercial free, um, and it has hundreds of materials that are seamless and picture bit or image based. Very awesome. That's why I downloaded this from. Um, but they, yeah, basically you put your metal metalness, you put your roughness into your roughness. Make sure uh, these are all these are non-color except for the diffuse. Um, then you pop in your normal, and then you come back to the 3D viewport, the render, and you have your metallic shader all right there for you, and um, it looks pretty good. Now in Fusion, uh, there's a lot more to it. There's or sorry, there's like a lot more you have to do. Pretty much, uh, let me show you. So go ahead, open up a new project, go into Fusion, wait for it to load. And so whenever I'm doing a just a regular material, I'll always just use the cook torrents with a um, with a reflect node as well. Uh, when I'm doing something that is going to have a metalness or a metallic uh, texture or me yeah texture material and like something that isn't metallic, so like paint or rust, um, I'll use a blend, and that's what this is the setup we'll be doing today. Um, for right now, just for the start, if you've never done materials in uh, Fusion, there's a third material. These are the ones you'll be using. This ward, think of this one as um, kind of like a clear coat blend. If, you're, if you have a material that's all metal, stick with blend. Um, if you have things that aren't metal, then stick with quick torrents. And um, yeah, you just kind of work it out from there. Um, okay. So this is our setup so far. What we need to do is load in the material or the, the texture maps. So we're going to go to metal. Oh, two, three, two K. Yep. Um, okay. So this is a diffuse. We're going to pipe it into the diffuse arrow. If in case you forget what uh, arrow is which, if you hover over it, it'll tell you down here in this um, in this area. So like right there, we have the roughness, bump map, refractive index. Um, that stuff. Okay, so now we're gonna do again. We've got to load all of our uh, textures in here. You can click and drag them. Uh, whenever I do that, uh, there tends to be this alpha outline that's super. Oh, here, I'll just show you guys. Uh, whenever I click and drag it, where'd it go? Uh, displacement. Here we go. Not even, we won't even be using displacement, but whenever I oh hey, didn't do it that time. How about that? Normally there's like this uh, area around it of just emptiness, and it's so annoying. Um, I'm sure there's a way to fix it, but uh, maybe it's just a glitch going on. Okay, so how about that? Most of the time I would stick with the loader anyways. Uh, yeah. Okay, so uh, this is our metalness map up there. We have our should be roughness. Okay, yeah, so this is roughness. This is our bump map. So with the bump map, we are going to add, well, normal map. Fusion is going to be a bump map. Um, the bump map, we're going to connect it into all three of these nodes. And actually, let's go ahead and view the cook torrents right now. Just uh, select it, hit one, and it'll pull up in, uh, your, uh, in your viewer. And I'm actually just going to change this to one viewer so we can see things a little bit better. This is the second viewer, so we're going to hit two. And then um, we're going to pipe in our bump map right here, not into roughness, into the bump map arrow. Perfect. And the reflect as well. And bump map texture. Nothing happened. We've got to go to the bump map uh, node. 
and we can change it from height map to bump map, perfect. And then we're gonna come over to our roughness material. Shift space, um, we will add a brightness and contrast just so I can explain things just a little bit better with the roughness. And then in order to get the roughness to work, you do need a channel booleans. Not the, th not the channel boolean, but the channel booleans. Um, and you're gonna pipe that into the roughness and nothing's happened. That's because we need to go to the alpha. It needs an alpha channel. So normally I just default to using red, but you can use green, blue. Um, you can mess around with everything in here. Okay, you'll notice it just made a slight little change there. And so you can tweak the roughness, make it more intense. Um, if you come down and you can tweak pretty much every, anything in here. And you'll notice that things start to change. Most of the time I don't mess with these, um, the gain, lift, saturation, all this stuff. And I'll just come straight to the highs and lows and I'll start tweaking this. And as you see, the more intense the reflection gets, the more we start to lose data. Um, and those show up in renders as like splotches of dead pixels. Um, so most of the time I'll just leave it like that. We just really need just the simple roughness on there, um, which is great. Okay, so now we have our metalness. This is the main core of the metal shader. So we're gonna do shift space, brightness contrast again, and then we're gonna do a channel booleans again. And this is going to be our main sort of setup here. So we're going to create three of these. And we're going to pipe the metalness into all of these. It's our metalness map. Perfect. Make sure the channel booleans, we have everything set to red or whatever channel you decide. And then we're going to pipe it into the specular color material. Oh. See nothing happening? Let's make sure we are viewing our blend material. So you can see automatically it looks so much more metallic. You can even unplug this and you can tell, hey, that is a metal shader. So we're going to pipe it in, specular color material, and that will keep the values of the rust to not so shiny. And then we'll pipe this one into the specular intensity material. And oftentimes, honestly, I'll even stick it into the uh, specular exponent um, just to see you know how it's working exactly and then uh, with our channel booleans right here we'll go, we're going to stick this into the intensity material um, you don't see anything happening that is because we don't have any reflection um, reflection thing on there right now um, and we're not even doing the reflection out so we're going to come back to the blend and with the brightness contrast you can tweak it and see how exactly you want to make it look. So like right there, make the rust a little less shiny on the ends. Um, pull it back. You can honestly you just find what works best for you. Um, okay, now reflect is very cool. Um, just because metalness, the shiny areas obviously reflect more than the uh, than the non-metal areas. Um, well, in this case, rust. So we're going to add a background node real quick, um, just so I can show you guys a little bit better. I'm going to make it all white. We're going to pipe it into the uh, specular color or the reflection material. There we go. Then let's make sure we are viewing this node. So now, the reflection color. You can see that better. Now. Um, Let's see here, the, uh, the shining areas obviously are going to reflect more of the background or the environment than the, um, than the rusted areas. So we can come to the reflect and, or sorry, yeah, we can come right to the brightness contrast and we can tweak this and decide, hey, how much do we want things to reflect? Without the, uh, there we go. I'm just going to leave it just like that. Without this, and you just get an even reflection, um, which does not look that good. Put this back in. Um, and that is the wrong one. And you get to see that it's reflecting a lot more accurately. And that is how you do a metallic shader in Fusion. So, uh, yeah, a lot more than Blender. And that is all right. Um, so thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next one. 
I'm not quite sure what that one's going to be yet, but uh, I will see you guys there. Thank you.